with another one take tutorial because I did one previously and that was all about getting outside of my comfort zone and you guys seem to like it so I'm here again doing another one as sirens go by so this is part of the one take tutorial experience it is not edited at all so I shoot a video in one take all the way through so you hear and see everything that might be happening. But today I wanted to do another one take tutorial because today is the 10th anniversary of the first video that I have up on my YouTube channel. And so I wanted to do something special to celebrate this moment. And from my last one take tutorial, you guys left comments asking for another one, but you also left requests for things to do in the future. So these are the comments that inspired this video. So I'm kind of taking multiple comments here and celebrating a milestone, the 10 year anniversary, and also creating a look from back in the day. So what I'm gonna do is take the first video that is up on my YouTube channel, which is a red lip tutorial, and I'm going to adjust it slightly to create a red lip look that is relevant to my life today. And I'm just gonna talk to you about this milestone in my life. So. Here we go, everyone. I'm nervous again. So Christina was like, are you nervous? And I was like, yes, but not like the first time. And now I'm like, it feels like the first time again. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna start off with my NARS eye primer. I'm not gonna list everything because then I get distracted from the conversation that I'm having, but I can say that I'm gonna start off with this. So it feels like a pretty big deal that this is my 10th year anniversary. It's not the 10th an anniversary of the creation of my channel because that was October 23rd, which I totally just didn't even realize what happened, like the day that it was happening. But as I reflected back on what I was doing on October 23rd, I realized that that was the day we had our podcast club meeting, our second one, and it made me feel so warm and full inside to know that one, I'd forgotten <laughs> my 10 year anniversary, but coincidentally, and I actually don't know if this was a coincidence, maybe it was destiny and fate, um, I was spending it with a group of people who were so thoughtful, who have been watching my videos for a really long time, who love listening to the podcast, who shared personal stories. We were in a vulnerable and safe space and it just felt so magical. And to know that that is how I was spending my 10 year anniversary without even knowing it felt like just true synchronicity. So. Um, that's what I was doing on my actual 10 year anniversary. Um, and fun fact about the video, the first video that's up on my channel right now, that actually is not the first video that I ever filmed. So the first video I ever filmed was a hair tutorial where I had a, my lamp behind me, like I was totally backlit. I didn't really say anything in the tutorial, I was just curling my hair and I didn't know what I was doing. I obviously didn't know how to light a video. I barely knew how to like work iMovie. Um, but I deleted that video pretty early on because I never thought like, oh yeah, I'm gonna wanna save my videos and this is gonna turn out to be a career for me and it'll end up being part of my archive. I was not thinking that. I was like, I can do better than this. I don't want to remember this. And I deleted it really early on. So that's why that video is not up anymore. Um, but, you know, I think it's cool that I have a red lip tutorial. That's my first video that's um, available to watch on YouTube um, because I still love wearing a red lip. It definitely has changed um, over the years. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I? I'm not good at multitasking. <laughs> so when doing one take tutorials are actually quite difficult and challenging for me. Another thing with one take tutorials, I am never going to make promises about the outcome of the look because I just, I can't do that. So I'm hoping for the best here. Last time we had quite a wild experience and I'm hoping that this time it's something a little bit more wearable, but we'll see. Um, so 
yeah, 10 years on YouTube. It feels like a big deal. Um, I just think back to, you know, when I started my channel, which I made at like 3 a.m. I like popped out of bed and I had been thinking about, you know, starting a YouTube channel because I had been watching YouTube videos for a while and I was just in this place of not feeling great. I was in a really dark, painful place in my life. My dad had just died three years previously. I was 20 years old. Um, I didn't know what I was doing with my life, where I wanted to go. And I think that's part of being 20, honestly. Um, but it was also combined with this like very deep pain and a lot of shame because I felt like I just always knew inside of me that the expectations that other people had for me just weren't what I wanted in my life. Um, and that was really hard to reconcile. Like other people wanted me to be a pretty little good girl and that's not who I am. I'm not a good girl. So um, I just don't identify with that label at all. But for so long, I tried to fit myself into that narrative. And so um, I discovered YouTube videos because I was bored and in pain. And what do you do when you're bored and in pain? You go on the internet, obviously, when you feel alone. And um, I actually don't know how I even like found makeup videos on YouTube. I am guessing that I was Googling something like makeup related and that's how I found like people, specifically girls and women sitting in their bedrooms or their living rooms talking about the beauty products that they were using. And um, I just was just totally, like enamored. I couldn't stop watching the videos because I felt so isolated in my life at that time um, and just really alone. And watching these people made me feel like I could be friends with them and I saw myself in them and that was a really powerful thing. It felt like I was just sitting down with someone who is my friend and they were just chatting to me about like whatever it was that they just bought and I knew really not that much about makeup or beauty at that point but I was um, curious about it. So it was just really fun and also I just was starting to have distrust in magazines because I had saved up my money and bought one too many shitty lipsticks and I just had it up to here with like magazine recommendations because I was like I don't want to spend my money on another shitty lipstick or shitty concealer like I'm done um, so it was really cool to like get recommendations from real people who also you know there were like Asian women who had a more similar um, skin type to me, a more similar skin color. Um, since I am mixed race, I felt like everything that I found in the drugstore when I was growing up was always really pink and just never worked for my skin. And so it was so cool to see what like these other girls and these other women were using. And so I thought, Eventually, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, what would it be like if I made videos? And, you know, I went back and forth for a while and then I just made my channel at 3 a.m. And if you've been around for a while, then you know that my channel name was Miss Glamorazzi. And honestly, I chose that name because the song Lady Gaga's Paparazzi was like in my head at that time. And I was just like, Cool. Like, what can I? Let's make a name out of this. So, you know, in my 3 a.m. days, that is what was born. And um, I think for a while, I like tried to erase that part of myself, like a part of like my YouTube like experience. Like, oh my god, my embarrassing screen name. And now I'm just like, you know, it's not something that I would choose today. 
but it's a part of my journey and it's a part of my story and I don't want to erase that from my story and you know it is what it is like I was 20 years old and that's what like came to my mind and it was the start of something so beautiful for me because I was in so much pain um you know I was always creative growing up and my mom when my mom got really sick when she had cancer all through my high school years and um even beyond she was still like dealing with issues like even after her cancer treatments um my dad died when i was 17 and i feel like in the midst of all of that i kind of lost that like creative connection i think my creativity was always still inside of me but my connection to it um was lost and i think that refre reflectively looking back on what youtube has given me and what youtube really gave me at the beginning was that reconnection with my creativity which you know i think is such a powerful source of healing at least it always has been for me and now that i'm at this point where i'm i'm at this like 10 year milestone i'm able to see how incredibly healing getting in touch with my creativity has been especially because now i'm like at this point where i feel like i've reconnected with my creativity in a new way that um is very reflective of what my life is like at 30 and all of the things that i've experienced oh god i hope that doesn't smear all over my rug i just dropped a chunk of this um but yeah i just look back on that 20 year old and i see how she was slowly coming back to life because i was able to do something creative and you know the beauty industry and the internet it has it's dark spots you know there's definitely an underbelly there's definitely like um pressure and expectation but i think there's also this incredibly magical creativity um that is inherent in beauty and um the sense of community that can truly be formed on the internet i think you know we're in a time now where we're much more critical of the internet, which I think is necessary, but I can't deny like the like community and connection that I have found through the internet. It was the starting point for me. Yes, like I have to have in-person face-to-face like contact with people, but the internet was such a great starting point for that connection, especially because I did feel so isolated. I did feel just really like, you know, anxious about meeting new people and um, just like putting myself out there just didn't really feel like a feasible option at that time and so the internet was a great way to kind of like dip my toes into that experience and you know then it turned into my career like two i would say like two years into making videos that's when i decided to pursue youtube as something more full-time because when i started you know youtube was not like a career path it wasn't something that people were aspiring to you know most of the time when you told people about youtube they were like what what is that they thought that people just posted like random cat videos on there they didn't really understand that there were communities forming and there was also just a very small handful of people who were just starting to kind of like make a living on YouTube. So by the time it was like two years into making videos for me, more people had started making a full-time living. And I thought to myself, you know, I think this is my path um, because, you know, like I said, I just always felt like other people's expectations were not in line with what I actually um, wanted for 
myself and I think that was hard for like my mom to <laughs> deal with um, especially at the beginning when no one really understood what this world was um, she was like what the hell are you doing uh, I did not come here for you to just mess around and like ruin your life um, and but I just, I knew that this was something that I needed to do because I would always look back on my life and wonder what if, if I didn't pursue this with everything that I had inside of me. And so I pursued this full time. And um, then the first ever Next Up contest came around and the contest still exists today, but not in the same form that it did the first time around. And this was a public contest. Um, but I think one of the hugest turning points in my career, well, actually like when this became my career, it was like when this happened, um, was when I won Next Up. I was one of the Next Up winners. And part of the prize was going to New York for this like five day camp. But another huge part of the prize was winning $30,000. And that money was life changing for me because for the first time in my life, I had a nest egg. Um, you know, I got my, I had gotten myself into credit card debt. Um, in my early 20s, the minute I got my first credit card, it was like I had no control. I had to like spend it on like any nice thing that I could possibly imagine and I ruined my credit. Um, I had $30,000 of student loan debt because I was trying to do the whole like college thing for my mom. I went to community college and then I dabbled in art school, which was not cheap um and so i had this like thirty thousand dollars um in addition to like the credit card debt and that money that thirty thousand dollars that i received from youtube no strings attached was completely life-changing because i was able to you know start paying off my debt so i was making money from youtube um maybe like two to three thousand dollars a month or so i'm guessing it's hard to remember exactly that long ago what exactly i was making but i'm guessing it was like somewhere around there maybe like the three thousand mark so i was making money from youtube and then i got this no strings attached money and it gave me so much security because i was able to start slowly working at paying off the debt that I had and um, I was able to invest in you know camera equipment and lighting I was able to move out of my mom's place and it just totally changed everything for me and I think you know I was growing and I was on a trajectory where I think it could have become my full-time career even if I hadn't um, one next up but i can't deny the role that that thirty thousand dollars played in my life at the very least just because it gave me so much more peace of mind like financial peace of mind which i had never really had in um my upbringing and if you want to hear more about like my money story and like my upbringing um on the one step podcast there are two episodes about money if you want to like hear more about that and like my personal story so um I will leave that for the podcast to go more in detail there but it was a big deal um to have that and when I say it was life-changing it really was and I just remember getting that money like so afraid on like the airplane going home because they just gave it to us like in our hands and I was like oh my god <laughs> I like I kept checking my bag to make sure that it was still there and um I just remember thinking to myself like I'm not gonna fuck this up like I I am not gonna fuck this up um so yeah I really see that as just this huge um, contribution to then the trajectory of my career. And God, there's so many things to like 
touch on, um, and I don't have a timer this time, so I can't see how long I've been talking, which makes me nervous. I'm like, oh God, how long is this going on for? How can I do my eyebrows like this too? This is, every time I do my eyebrows, I'm just like, why is it like the first time all over again? Uh, I saw, I was watching a tutorial that Christine did and she was basically saying the exact same thing. She was like, why is it with my eyebrows? It's like, the fr I have no muscle memory and that's exactly how I feel. Um, so where was I? Uh, <laughs> uh, man, where's my highlighter though? Shoot, okay, well, oh, there it is. Um, yeah, I don't even know like what to touch on because I feel like there have been so many huge milestones but like when I think about the last 10 years as a whole I don't so much like think about it in moments but I think about it in terms of like how I felt and how I feel now um and it just feels like the biggest transformation that breath was me trying not to cry uh I am determined to get through a video and not cry uh and yeah I just look back on that 20 year old and I see so much transformation I'm so grateful for the decisions that she made and honestly I think that a lot of the decisions I made when I was younger, like at 20 years old, I did because I was less inhibited. Um, and I'm grateful for that. I didn't spend as much time like worrying. Uh, and I just did it. Like I got up at 3 a.m. and I just made my channel. And I was just doing the next thing that made sense to me. And I feel like now at 30, I'm really like reconnecting with that part of myself um, and I look back on my younger self and all at once I see so much of the same person at the core and then I also see this entirely different person and it's like these two opposing truths that are happening at the same time I feel like in so many ways like I am that like just strong-willed creative person and then now like the change I just I feel like I've let like my ferociousness out I've let myself just be that like wild and free creative person that I've always like felt myself to be and like emotional and deep and complicated and messy um because when I look back at that younger self, I see someone who is trying to be that pretty little good girl. And when I look at myself now, I'm just like, no, I'm not a good girl. And that's not what I wanna be. You know, I see the words like pretty little good girl. And what that looks like to me now is like, I've come in and completely just shattered that glass. Um, and that feels so powerful. Um, and this is the part where, Apparently I can't control myself, but I think the greatest gift of the last 10 years has been growing up with so many people. And especially now, this year, so many people I've met just in real life who've told me that they have grown up with me. And it is the greatest gift to know that I have touched even just one other life out there. And I think what you may not realize is how much you've touched my life by just telling me those things, um, by just living your lives as who you are. Um, that has touched me in such a huge, huge way. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and it feels like it's all really hitting me in this in this 10th 
year that 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 connection and that flow between us and I think that there's something really huge about the decade between 20 and 30 and to know that so many of you have gone through that with me in your own way on your own paths and to see what so many of you are doing with your lives now in all different career paths all different life experiences oh it is just i don't know if there are words to really describe that um but it feels like oh yeah this is what life is about you know that feeling of just touching one other person's life and to know that one other person has made an impact on like yours and that's how I feel um so yeah it just it's really just washing over me this year and I'm gonna try and put my blush on over tears it's this another beauty blend the tears away moment <laughs> this is gonna be a one day tutorial theme I mean it really does work though <laughs> It's a good beauty blender, good for soaking up the tears, too. Okay. I'm just going to inspect my makeup for a second. <laughs> it feels kind of funny, like, looking at my makeup after crying, but it is what it is. You know, this is also a tutorial. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to put on a little blush. But, oh, now I'm just thinking of you know, my life in terms of like the makeup products I'm putting on, like putting some color onto my face. And I just thought to myself, you know, the career that I've had and the experience and everything, it just starting with YouTube has added so much color to my life. You know, when I started in this place that felt so empty and so bleak and so daunting and so endless. And to know that 10 years later, I'm in this place where life just seems so vibrant and so colorful and so full is amazing. Um, yeah, it's just, it is remarkable. Um, and I am so grateful for the last 10 years. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what the next 10 years has in store. And I want to say thank you to all of you for being here, no matter how long you've been here. Um, whether you, you're here just now or you've been here since the Miss Glamorancy days, thank you. It's been a ride. And... I'm excited to, you know, have the keys in my hand. I'm in the driver's seat and I'm I'm fully owning my life and my path and this space has played such a huge role in that. So thank you for being here along the way. I'm going to end this video here. I think this look is complete. Normally my eyes aren't as watery and red, but here is my current day red lip look um and that's all for today folks i'll see you next time bye